refreshed and renewed as we share this liturgy. Happy Easter, all of you. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. We come together this morning to celebrate this great and wonderful feast of Easter, to remind ourselves that a beloved God has given his life for us and the life of his Son so that we might have life everlasting. We come with our hearts filled with joy to proclaim the mystery of our faith as we sign ourselves now with the sign of that faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit and the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And also with you. As we celebrate this feast of Easter, we're reminded of the fact that Jesus Christ died for the forgiveness of our sins. And to really to understand that, it's important for us at times to reflect on our own lives, to call to mind our need for that forgiveness so that we might truly celebrate the gift that we have received. So we pause for a few moments and reflect on the times that we have not lived as an Easter people, at the time that we have not let hope be our strength and love be our source. We ask God to continue to give us strength, mercy, and forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, you are risen from the dead. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Christ Jesus, you have called us to a new and eternal life. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. And Lord Jesus Christ, you have sent your spirit into our heart that we might always live as your children. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for your mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring all of us into the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your people. And grant to us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. 
And may that Easter peace and joy be with all of you. And also with you. And of course, being socially responsible, let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace on. Peace. And as the people of God, let us together proclaim God's glory. Christ will raise us up and renew our lives. Lord God, our heavenly parent, creator of all, today is the day of Easter joy. This is the morning on which the Lord appeared to us who had begun to lose hope and opened the eyes to all of us to what the scriptures foretold, that he must first die and that he would rise and ascend to your glorious place in heaven. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives by the Spirit that is within us. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. First reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Okay. okay. You never know. Peter proceeds, proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. 
To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. This is the second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, brothers and sisters. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above. Where is Christ is seated and the right hand of God. Think of what is above most, not of what is on earth. For what you have died, and in your life is hidden with the Christ in God. When Christ is your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord.
saying to one another, who will open a stone for us from the entrance of the pool? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter. He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. My dear family, the gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and happy Easter again. I want to share with you my own little Easter uh, miracle this year. On Friday, after our Good Friday services, I went to Walmart to get the lilies for this year because last year they had such beautiful lilies. And I walked into Walmart and they had not a single, single lily. So then I went down to the Publix there on Pompano and they had one lily, but they had no blooms. So fine. So then I went to the Publix here on Commercial and Dixie, and they had two lilies, neither with any blooms. So then I went to Home Depot, but I figured Home Depot have lilies, and they had two, both with brown blooms. <laughs> they were dead. So I got in my car, and on, on my dad part of my car, I have a little crystal angel. And I looked at my angel and I said, listen, I need lilies for tomorrow. And you had better get me some lilies. And by that time, a car had turned in the driveway, so the lights hit the uh, crystal of the angel, and they kind of flashed at me. I said, go ahead, wink at me, but I want lilies tomorrow. So on the way home, I stopped at the Publix by where I live on Sunrise, and I walked in, and there were a couple lilies there with no blooms. But then I looked over, and there were two lilies there with beautiful blooms. So I ran over, and I grabbed them, and I was bending down, I looked over, and there were a bunch more lilies. So I went over and got them. And as I was walking out, I saw a Easter egg cake. And I figured, well, I'll get an Easter egg cake for, for church. So I put it in the basket, and I turned around, I saw a whole nother stack of lilies. So I took the Easter egg cake, I put it back, and I went back and I filled my cart with lilies. I went and I checked out, loaded all these lilies in my car, went back to get the Easter egg cake, and Publix was closed. <laughs> so I got my lilies, my angel listened to me, but that was it. Now the addendum to the story is yesterday I was going to go back and get the Easter egg cake, and I heard a commercial about um, Krispy Kreme had Easter egg uh, donuts. So we're having Krispy Kreme donuts this morning instead of cake. So the angels are watching out after us. And I like that because today's gospel is that the first encounter of the resurrection was an angel. That Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb to do the ritual for Jesus, and they were greeted by an angel who informed them that Christ had risen from the dead. The good news was first proclaimed by the angels. We remember that from Christmas, that the good news was first proclaimed by all the angels in heaven. And see, I take great pride in the fact that we are holy angels. And we believe that the angels are a part of our lives. And the angels continue to watch over and guide us. So I ask us on this Easter morning, are we aware of all the angels in our lives? Are we aware of all the people that God has placed in our lives and all the events that God has placed in our lives to remind us of God's presence. See, sure, we celebrate the resurrection, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, but that was over 2,000 years ago. The reality of our life is that God is alive in our world right now, in our lives right now, and has been for the last 2,000 years. Surely we celebrate this feast, this memorial, but this is not just a single day. This is every day. 
Every day of our lives, Jesus Christ is risen. Every day of our lives, Jesus Christ calls us to a fullness of life, to a new life, to remind us of a very simple truth, and one that we've heard over the last several years proclaimed again and again. Love wins. Jesus Christ, through the love of God, has overpowered death and evil in our life, and love wins. All the many ways that God has to remind us each and every day that we are loved, that we have new life in Jesus Christ, that we have every right to celebrate with joy the peace, no matter what the world throws at us. Love wins. This day is a testament to that. It was the ultimate triumph of love over hate. It was the ultimate triumph of good over evil. And we celebrate that. And we hear the angels proclaim to us that Christ is in our midst and that Christ is alive. But it goes a little bit further than that. Because in a sense, each one of us are called to be servants of God, to be angels to one another. That each one of us has been given the opportunity and the obligation to proclaim that Jesus Christ is risen. That in a world that seems at times lost with despair, that we are messengers of hope, of faith. And in a world that is suffering a lot of times, and people who are suffering, people who have lost hope, we may be the only angel that they know. We may be the ones that God has placed in their lives at this place and time to proclaim to them a word of hope, to remind them that love wins. You know, as I was thinking about this, I'm thinking about so many, many coming out stories of years past, and that one of the things that started the transition that people who were different would be accepted is when people who were different came out. And all of a sudden, there's people who were a mystery, who were feared, were no longer feared. They were people. That I am convinced that the root of hate is fear. And the cause of fear is ignorance or just not knowing. How many people do we know today who no longer believe in the church or in religion or maybe not even God? So many people I've heard that they believe in the stars and the planets and in new age simply because the stars and the planets don't judge. Well, we have a message for them. Unconditional love. Love without judgment. That is the message of holy angels. And that was the message of the angels on Christmas. And that was the message of the angels on Easter Sunday. God does not judge. God saves. God gives new life. God gives peace. God gives hope. As we celebrate this memorial of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as we celebrate this very sacred feast, we open our heart to the power of God's love. And we open ourselves to be followers of Jesus Christ. That we, like the angel that sat in that tomb, that we are here to proclaim to the world that Jesus Christ is alive. That Jesus the Christ is alive in our hearts, Jesus Christ is alive in our world. And Jesus Christ, the risen Christ, brings peace, brings hope, and proclaims love. We are called the children of God. That is, by its very nature, a relationship of love and a relationship of life. We answer that call today as we, when we re renew ourselves in our baptismal promises, to remind ourselves that we are God's beloved children, that this place, this is not really God's house. 
this is our house because we are the children of God. And we make a commitment to live as children of God, to live as people of light and of life. And we make a commitment to be like the angels, to proclaim to all the world that Jesus Christ is alive and that God's love is real. May those Easter blessings be with you this day and all of your days. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, this water will be used to remind us of our baptism. We ask God to bless it and to bless us and to keep us faithful to the spirit that God has placed within each of our hearts. Loving God, our Father, our Mother, the source of all mercy and love, through these waters of baptism, you have filled us with new life as your very own children. From all who are baptized in water and the Holy Spirit, you have formed one people, united in your Son, Jesus Christ. You have set us free and filled our heart with the spirit of your love, that we may live in your peace. You call those who have been baptized to announce the good news of Jesus Christ to people everywhere. We pray by the mystery of this consecrated water, remind us of our new and spiritual birth in baptism. Hear our prayers and bless this water, which we bring before you here and in our homes. May this water remind us of our baptism, bring us your protection, and fill us always with the joy, the hope, and the love of this Easter season. We ask this through Christ, who is our risen Lord. Amen. And my sisters and brothers, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we might walk with Christ in the newness of life. I invite you now to join with me in renewing our baptismal promises. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth? And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all of our sins. May God also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus the Christ forever and ever. Amen. And I might warn you to take off your glasses unless you want water spots. For us. Let us now come before our God in presenting our prayers and our petitions. 
during this Easter season, may we all be refreshed in mind, body, and spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the power of the resurrection remind us always of our sacred calling, that we one day will join in the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In Christ's sacrifice for us, let us always be mindful of our call to sacrifice for others. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our governmental leaders. Bless them with wisdom and ears tuned to the needs of the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for spiritual leaders everywhere. Bless them with grace and kindness and goodness. Let them always preach a gospel of life. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all of those who live lives of selfless sacrifice, for those who care for others, for firefighters and police officers, for EMTs, for doctors, for teachers, and all who live lives that nourish the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our service men and women wherever they might be. Let them be harbingers of peace in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, the sick, the lonely. We pray for those in nursing homes and in prison, that they might have the comfort of the Holy Spirit rest upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the just distribution of the vaccine throughout the world so that all might have access to its life-saving medicine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for your needs, which we remember now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies, for their healing and their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our beloved dead whom we remember now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those needs which we ought to pray for, for but perhaps have slipped our mind in this moment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father and Mother, we come before you as your children, as people of faith. We ask you to continue to look upon us and to call us into a full union with you and with Jesus Christ, that we might proclaim your love to the world. We would ask that you would continue to strengthen us, that you would hear and answer these prayers and all the prayers of your people that are made known to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Covered in sin and shame I 
crystal and glass to metal. But I wanted to talk to you about the, the chalice using today. Uh, Joe Lobby was a member of our parish. Uh, we did not realize at first that he was a priest and this is his chalice. And so I want to use that today in memory of him, Father Ralph, Father Zeke, and all the priests who have served in this church in memory of them as we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate their lives as well. Mother and Father of Life, we come together as your children bringing us our hopes and our dreams, our successes and our failures, our acts of love and kindness, and our areas of need of healing. We humbly invite you to be present with us and to us. Let us feel your nearness, O source of life. Raise our awareness of your presence and your presence in you. Today we bring you these simple gifts of bread and wine, unleavened bread that represents the sacrifices we make in life and the implements of this world, and the wine that represents the finer things and the happy moments. In them we have the fullness of this human experience and the promise of eternal life through our risen Lord. And so, great Creator, bless, we ask you to fill these gifts with the power of your Spirit, that these may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our risen Lord, at whose invitation we celebrate this Eucharist making these the completeness of our eternal existence. And pray with me, my sisters and brothers, that these, our simple gifts, may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. And may the Lord accept these gifts from our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of God's church. And the Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed good and right that we should give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Mother and Father, through Jesus Christ, who is our risen Lord. We have gathered here at your table as a family, a people as diverse as the stars in the Gospels. We all have different perspectives, different callings, different beliefs, different gifts, and are at different places in our lives. Yet at this table, we are one family, one people, a single body of Christ, united in love, with no member greater nor less than the other. In this sacred unity, we now join our own voices with all of creation, with all the saints, and with all the angels that have proclaimed your presence, as we proclaim the glory of your Son, as we join in the everlasting song of praise.
with his family and friends to celebrate the Passover meal, a meal that reminded them of God's presence in their lives. And during the meal, he took the bread and he offered you his God in heaven thanks and praise. And so we, his followers, take our bread and we offer you thanks and praise as we pray, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. And then Jesus broke the bread, gave it to those who were at table with him. He said to them, he says to us, take this, all of you, and drink, eat of this. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Jesus then took the cup of thanksgiving and gave thanks and praise to God Most High. We also give thanks and praise to God as we pray. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Then he gave that cup to those whom he loved and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of a new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. By these words, Jesus becomes truly present in the bread and wine. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. sharing in this Eucharist, we proclaim the life of Jesus Christ here present among us. May the spirit of life and wholeness that transforms these gifts that we present transform us as well, that we might be refreshed in our inner being and be empowered to bring mercy, love, and healing to all of those whose lives we touch. May we share with the world the gift that God has entrusted to each one of us. May we share of our very selves. We ask also for some small portion of your grace for ourselves. We ask that you see the areas where we are hurting and bring us your divine healing. Hear our hopes and visions for ourselves and help us to achieve them. Almighty Mother and Father, please guide and protect all whom you have chosen to be spiritual guides and leaders. Send your spirit upon all those who suffer with illness and poverty of body and spirit and bring them your healing. Welcome into your kingdom our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Give us hearts filled with fire for justice and compassion. Let us be good examples in all that we do to lead this world to a more equitable, more loving time that puts care for one another above all else. Continue to fill us with the grace of the Holy Spirit that we might always be united in Christ in giving praise to you in all things. Help all your family to come together through the power of love manifested by Jesus the Christ. Who is with him in him? In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
We are a family. We are God's chosen people. We are sisters and brothers. We unite ourselves in heart and spirit as we pray in the words that our Savior has left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Jesus Christ, with faith in your mercy and your love, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let this bring us health in mind and in body. Probably why Jesus did the bread first and then did the wine after dinner. My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, who not only rose from the dead, but has come back to be with us, that we might know the fullness of his life, of his joy, of his peace. Happy are we who are invited to this Eucharist. Lord, I was not worthy that you should come unto me, but you have said the word, and I have in you. And may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring all of us to life everlasting. We, of course, invite everyone here to come to share, to receive this gift of God's love. For those of you who are joining us from your homes, we know that the Spirit of God is truly present with you as well. We invite you to open up your hearts and to receive into your hearts and your lives the very real presence of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
and let us pray. Loving God, we gather as your children to thank you for the many gifts that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you in love that you have sent your Son among us and that you have called him and us to new life and that through him you strengthen us with the gift of this Eucharist. We ask that you continue to send your angels upon us to guide us and to empower us to proclaim to all the world that Jesus Christ is risen and is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Hi, y'all. Hi, those of you joining us at home. So glad to have all of you with us. Uh, happy Easter again. It is just so wonderful to see us and knowing that life is starting to resume somewhat normal and all that kind of stuff. So we look forward to the day when the uh, pandemic is history and families can come together and celebrate and enjoy and celebration and all that. So, uh, But thank you for being here this morning. I, I truly hope all of you have a very holy and blessed Easter. Um, thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone who donated for the flowers for uh, those of you who remember those who in memories are given to. And again, just thank you for your generosity. Uh, helps make our church look a little bit more pretty, so thank you for that. Um, any birthdays here in, in the room this morning? We have a couple of birthdays who are not here. Um, today is Letty's birthday, uh, so we want to wish a Letty, Letty, happy birthday. I'm sure you're watching, so happy birthday to you. Um, Monday is James, a dear friend of mine's birthday, and then Tuesday is Dee's birthday, so happy birthday to you, Dee. So uh, we'll, we'll do Letty and Dee, so happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear indeed. Happy birthday to you. Now, we could make ourselves fly like we're from New York and say, Happy birthday to yous. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, yous guys. Okay. Uh, also, want to thank you for your generosity for the uh, our Lenten mission. Uh, up to date, we have collected almost $400 to send to the folks in uh, um, in Sierra Leone to Holy Angel School. And again, the, the sacrifice we make makes such a difference in their world. So thank you so, so very much for your kind generosity uh, to them. If anyone still has any generation, donations, we'll uh, gladly accept them today. Won't we, John? We will. So, uh, And then we'll be getting uh, with Father Joe and getting the check off to Sierra Leone. So again, thank you for that. Uh, if anyone would like to take any Easter water home with you, we do have little bottles here that we can fill up a bottle and give you some Easter water. Uh, if you come in, if you notice our Easter display, there are Easter eggs in there that have little chocolate. So I do invite everyone to come forward and to uh, take an Easter egg, have some chocolate. Uh, we also have some uh, uh, Krispy Kreme Easter donuts. So we invite you to join us with that and uh, some of uh, Chris's finest uh, coffee. So, uh, And uh, next week, um, Thursday and Friday and Saturday, um, some of the clergy will be in Orlando for our meeting. Others will be joining us for uh, on Zoom. On Saturday, um, Deacon uh, Matthew from Orlando will become Father Matthew. So we will be celebrating the ordination of another priest for our, uh, for our church, and we just pray that God continue to bless uh, Father Matthew and that God continue to bless the uh, Holy Angels and the National Catholic Church with um, people dedicated to serving the people of God. We definitely want to remember him in our prayers and wish him all of God's blessings and that the Spirit will truly continue to be in his heart as he ministers to God's people. Um, speaking of ministering to God's people, we want to again thank uh, Father Rich for uh, his ministry of pastoral counseling. Um, there are a lot of people facing a lot of stresses in life right now and uh, he is don donating and dedicating his time to helping people um, to find meaning in all the suffering. So again, thank you for your ministry and for your willingness to minister. Any other? Yeah, I actually have one very important announcement. Uh, not yesterday, but the day before, my phone started blowing up in the middle of the night and it was a our good friends at Latino Salud. And they got word that they were going to get a truckload of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccines. 
and they will be distributing them on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. If you have not been vaccinated, call Latino Salud and get an appointment. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is the one and done, so you don't have to come back again another month later. And I encourage each and every one of you to get vaccinated. If you need the phone number, come find me right after Mass. If not, you can, it's just the main line at Latino Salud. If you get their voicemail, leave a message and they will call you back to schedule your appointment. So this is an opportunity to get vaccinated. There are no questions asked. You just have to bring your ID. Okay? So please, I encourage each and every one of you to get vaccinated so we can end this pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's no cost too. That's probably important. Well. Yeah, yeah. Any other announcements? Thank you. Uh, today is the uh, uh, first Sunday of the month, so it is our healing Sunday. So we'll take a time and uh, invite uh, God's healing presence among us in a very special sacrament of the anointing of the sick. I invite you to join with me in prayer. God of all love, you chose and sent your Son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayers of faith. Send the power of the Holy Spirit, the Consoler, into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift and fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal us in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver us from every affliction. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns this day and all days with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We invite those who wish to come forward to come forward to be anointed on the forehead and on the palms of the hand. We ask that as and then we ask that people who are continue to remember those in prayer as they're being anointed. We also extend this healing power to those of you who are joining us from home. Know that the healing power of God is not limited to this time and to this place, that we hold you in our hearts and we pray for God's healing power upon you as well. I invite you to please come forward and be anointed.
Archangel Raphael, angel of health, the Lord has filled thy hand with balm from heaven to soothe and cure our pain. Holy Raphael, we ask you to help us in all our needs and all the trials of this life. As you are the physician of God, we pray you heal our souls of the many infirmities and our bodies of the ills that afflict it. And loving Father in heaven, through this holy anointing, grant us comfort in our suffering. When we are afraid, give us courage. When afflicted, give us patience. When dejected, afford us hope. And when alone, assure us of the support of your holy angels. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite you to stand and to pray for God's special Easter blessings. And may Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of Easter, and may God protect you against all sin and evil. Amen. And through the resurrection of Jesus the Son, God has granted us healing. May God fulfill all the promises and bless you with eternal life. You have mourned for Christ's sufferings, and now you celebrate the joy of the resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The masses and peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Again, thank you all for joining us. I hope you have a very happy Easter, a great day. Uh, please take a Easter egg with if you wish. Come have a donut if you want some Easter water. Um, come grab some of that as well. God bless you all.